This is AHL Explains. I'm Anthony Ledford and today I'll be explaining cross-sectional momentum. Today we're going to look at cross-sectional momentum and our main focus is to distinguish this type of strategy from the time series momentum strategies we've seen previously. So to illustrate this I'm going to draw a simple diagram here and have two axes. The vertical one is going to be percentage change and I have zero there and the horizontal axis is going to be time and this is today and this point here would be one year ago. Now what I need to do in order to illustrate this strategy is think of uh, an equity market for example the FTSE 100 and I'm going to ignore any exits or entries from the FTSE 100 so I'm going to assume all the stocks that were there a year ago are still there today and simply plot out the percentage changes over that 12 month time horizon. Now some of the equities will have done really well, some of them will have done really badly, some will have started off well and gone bad and some will have started off bad and come good etc. You can do that for each of the 100 equities in the strategy and you'll get a picture that looks a bit like this. Okay, having done that, you then choose the top, say, 33 equities, and you choose the bottom 33 equities according to their percentage change over a one-year horizon compared to their peers, and you go long these, and you go short these, and the ones in the middle you just ignore. And that is basically the strategy. Now the reason we use a one-year horizon is because stocks do different things over different timescales. Over short timescales of about a month, they exhibit mean reversion, whereas over longer timescales, say a year or more, they exhibit more of this momentum behaviour we're trying to capture. Now, providing the actual period we're using here is long enough so that the momentum effect dominates the much more recent mean reversion effect, you can do it by just taking a, say, one-year horizon. Other people do it different ways and they may explicitly exclude the last months of data or they may actually use a one-year return but base it from 13 months ago to one month ago. So again, they are, they're ignoring the last period of one month. Now this type of strategy is extremely common, both in the industry and within academia. And in fact, if you talk to people uh, both from academia or the industry about momentum trading, this is usually what do they think you mean. So you have to be a bit careful who you're talking to. And I always try and express that I'm either talking about a cross-sectional momentum strategy or a time series momentum strategy, just to make sure people haven't latched onto the wrong idea. Now, let's just distinguish those things a little bit further. The cross-sectional momentum strategy is applied to a group of equities. It's also a multivariate strategy. And what I mean by that is that to work out whether you should be long or short in each individual equity, you can't make that judgment just by looking at its performance in isolation. It's its performance relative to the performance of all of the other equities within the group that's important there. So that's what I mean by multivariate. It's also a relative performance strategy. It aims to um, distinguish between whether these are outperforming the peer group or underperforming the, the peer group and then trading the difference between them. It's not uh, the type of strategy we've seen previously which is about simply does the market go up or does it go down. For that reason you can make this strategy market neutral if you actually balance the amount of exposure you have on the long side with the amount that you have on the short side you can build a market neutral strategy this way now let's contrast that with what you have in time series momentum time series momentum is not done on a group of equities it's done on individual futures contracts so instead of being multivariate time series momentum is actually a univariate strategy that gets applied to each series of prices individually. Um, it's not a relative performance strategy either. Time series momentum is an absolute performance strategy. It makes money by correctly forecasting whether the market goes up or whether it goes down, not whether one group of uh, equities will outperform or underperform another group. And for that reason as well, um, it's not a market neutral strategy. The time series momentum strategy by definition takes long or short exposure to the market. There's no concept of market neutrality there. Another difference between these two types of momentum system that we could mention here concerns the shape of their return distributions. 
Cross-sectional momentum shows negative skewness, whereas time series momentum has a mildly positive skew. So this very simple treatment I've gone through today is really to make clear that the time series momentum strategy and the cross-sectional momentum strategies are very different things. And when you're talking about them to different people, it's very important to make sure that you're talking about the same thing. So I would always suggest that you preface it with giving them their full title, either cross-sectional momentum or time series momentum. And that brings us to the end of this second block of AHL Explains. Thanks very much.